Most of us have learned how to pretend to love others, how to speak kindly, avoid hurting their feelings and appear to take an interest in them. We may even be skilled in pretending to feel moved with compassion when we hear of others' needs. Akalim Shalom, my beautiful kings and queens. Welcome to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Crystal. So glad to have you here. Today I will be reading in the Bible on love and action, and we will be in Romans chapter 12, verse 9 through 10. I will be reading from New International Version. If this is something that you would like to listen to and watch, please continue. Okay, my brothers and sisters, so we are in Romans chapter 12, verse 9 through 10, and it reads, my kings and queens, love must be sincere, hate what is evil, cling to what is good, amen? Be devoted to one another in love, my brothers and sisters, honor one another above yourself, amen? Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord, amen? Most of us have learned how to pretend to love others, how to speak kindly, avoid hurting their feelings, and appear to take an interest in them. You guys, I had to learn this because I'm telling you, with your faith walk, you, their human side be want to come out. I'm talking about on a daily. Their human side be want to come out on a daily and you just be want to go off on some people. But we're not doing that. We are focusing on being more like Christ. Amen. We may even be skilled in pretending to feel moved with compassion when we hear of others' needs or to become indignant when we learn of injustice. But God calls us to real and sincere love that goes far beyond pretense and politeness. Sincere love requires concentration and effort. Amen. It means helping others become better people. Glory. Hallelujah. It demands our time, money, and personal involvement. Jesus. No individual has the capacity to express love to a whole community, but the body of Christ in our town does. Look for people who need your love and look for ways you and your fellow believers can love your community in Christ. Amen. We can honor others, my brothers and sisters, in one or two ways. One involves utterly motives. We honor our bosses so they will reward us, our employees, so they will work harder, the wealthy, so they will contribute to our cause, the powerful, so they will use their power for us and not against us. God's other way involves love as Christians. We honor people because they have been created in God's image, amen, because they are our brothers and sisters in Christ, amen, and because they have a unique contribution to make to Christ's church. Ask yourself, my brothers and sisters, does God's way of honoring others sound too difficult for your competitive nature? Why not try to outdo one another in showing honor? Put others first. Amen. Before we go, my brothers and sisters, I want you to look at the list of gifts and imagine the kinds of people who would have each gift. Prophets are often bold and articulate. Amen. Servers are those in ministry who are faithful and loyal. Teachers are clear thinkers. Amen. Encouragers know how to motivate others and givers are generous and trusting. Leaders are good organizer and managers. Those who show mercy are caring people who are happy to give their time to others. It could be difficult for one person to embody all these gifts. An assertive prophet would not usually make a good counselor and a generous giver might fail as a leader. When you identify your own gifts, my brothers and sisters, ask how you can use them to build up God's family. Amen. At the same time, realize that your gifts can't do the work of the church all alone. Be thankful for people whose gifts are completely different from yours. Amen. Let your strength balance their weaknesses and be grateful that their abilities make up for your disinfectious. Together, you can build Christ's church.
Glory. Hallelujah over some helping strategies on the next couple of slides that are going to be relating to the express need to the gospel. Each strategy includes suggestions about how to present Christ in that particular situation far as ministering to the person in his or her need, as well as establishing believers in his or her Christian life. Amen. Whether it's a first time decision for Christ or a renewal of commitment, the person should be encouraged. Amen. So we're going to go over those four or five basic needs that are going to include the steps to peace with God, as well as God and the cross and how to receive Jesus Christ. Amen. As our Lord and Savior and what to pray, because a lot of people, People don't know how to pray or don't know where to begin and they feel like it's a certain way to pray so each person you talk to as a Christian witness will of course be unique so we are going to use these helping strategies not only to extend that they will truly help others but beyond the trust of God words and his indwelling Holy Spirit to guide them amen let's continue you may be thinking Oh, how do I start? How do I begin? Where do I begin? Steps to peace with God. I want you to remember God loves you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. John chapter 3 verse 16. Very popular scripture. Indeed, it does mean exactly what it says. All you have to do is believe. Believe in God. Believe in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Don't give up. Start over. Start over today. God and the cross. God loves bridge the gap of separation between God and you. Amen. When Jesus died on the cross and rose from the grave, he paid the penalty for our sins. The Bible says he personally carried the load of your sins in his own body when he died on the cross. Amen. First Peter chapter two, verse one through 24. So I'm going to go and read that. Christ sacrificed our sins was not an afterthought, not something God decided to do when the world spun out of control. This plan was set in motion by all knowing eternal God long before the world was created. What a comfort it must have been to the Jewish believers to know that Christ's coming and his work of salvation were planned by God long before the world began. This assured them that the law was not being scraped because it didn't work, but that both the law and the coming of Christ were part of God's eternal plan. Sincere love involves selfless giving. A self-centered person can't truly love. God, love, and forgiveness free you to take your eyes off yourself and to meet others' needs. By sacrificing his life, Christ showed that he truly loves you. Now you can love others by following his example and giving yourself sacrificially. Peter reminds believers that everything in this life possession accomplishment, people will eventually fade away and disappear. Only God's will, word, and work are permanent. We must stop grasping the temporary and begin focusing on time, money, and energy on the permanent. The word of God and our eternal life in Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. So now you may be asking your sister, but Crystal, how do I receive Christ? You cross the bridge into God's family when you receive Christ by personal invitation. The Bible says, but as many as receive him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. Amen. Even to those who believe in his name. Amen. John chapter 1 verse 12. I'm going to give you four things you need to do. Number one, admit your spiritual need that I am a sinner. Admit it. Come clean. Admit to Father God. Amen. Number two. Repent and be willing to turn from your sins. You got to be willing to repent and change. Okay. The road is not going to be easy. It's going to be tough, but learn from your mistakes. Okay. Learn from your mistakes. Number three, believe that Jesus Christ died for you on the cross. You can't accept something in your life that you don't even believe in. So you must believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Number four, receive through prayer, 
Jesus Christ into your heart, into your life. Amen. So now you're thinking, okay, Crystal, you told me how to admit. You told me how to repent. You told me how to believe. You told me how to receive. But what are the words? What's the right words that I need to say to Father God so he can hear me? How do I pray? I don't know how to pray. How do I pray to Father God as my Lord and Savior so that he can hear me, Crystal? So you're going to pray. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner and I need your forgiveness. I believe that you died for my sins. I want you to turn my sins. I now invite you to come into my heart and life. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus name, I pray. Amen. Fellowship with others in Christ. Take a firm stand for Jesus Christ. Make your life count. Tell someone about God and how you came about receiving Christ as your Lord and Savior. Amen. Read and study God's word and pray every day. Well, thank you so, so much if you have made it to the end of this video. Here I have my schedule for you guys. I will be doing devotional reading at 10 a.m. Eastern Time, Monday through Friday. And I will also do Read With Me in the Bible at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. When you come, I ask that you bring a pen and a pad to take notes. We want to learn together. Also, volunteer to do a Bible study, devotional reading, or anything to do with Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. It can be anything, long as it's positive. Amen. Let me know so I can be a part of your worship together as brothers and sisters in Christ, kings and queens. Hashtag. Also, before we go, follow my new Instagram for devotional journaling only. Content is coming soon on that IG. You don't want to miss. I will see you guys later. Peace and blessings.